Hello everyone and welcome to another video. So today I want to talk a little bit about this guy. So this is the Chef's Choice um, Model 15 and XV, I believe if I remember my Roman numerals, XV is also 15 in Roman numerals. But anyway, this is the, uh, yeah, the Trizor you know, Model 15 Chef's Choice. It's an electric knife sharpener. Um, this one, I'm very excited about this. We've got a whole bunch of knives that are really dull and we're excited to see if this will actually fix the problem. Um, this is, a, like I said, in this electric unit. Here's some specs on the side. You can see uh, what it does. It sharpens most type of knives. Um, the one I'm excited about too is it does also mention that it does do serrated knives. So we're gonna take a look at that later just to double check. But mostly we want this for kitchen knife usage. Uh, that's what we're mostly doing but uh, yeah this is the the unit um, not a whole lot else you've got a couple of uh, different languages on the box pretty standard box nothing super duper special about it let's open this up and see what comes inside um, this unit I've seen for various prices I think I got this for around um, 115 and here we go this looks pretty simple uh, let's see what's inside Okay, yeah, wow, this this couldn't be this could not be simpler. So in from an unboxing perspective, you see it comes nicely packaged and this is wow, okay, that's literally it. It's the unit. Um okay. Uh and an instruction manual. So that's literally the two things. So let's go ahead and give this a little bit of a read so we can understand how to use this. And then we are gonna plug this guy in and give it a whirl with a couple of different knives. All right, so I've gone ahead and grabbed all of our knives that are actually pretty dull right now. Um, I've labeled them all. I guess we've got numbers one through 16. And uh, let's start with a before test, meaning let's grab one of these knives and I'll just show you, these things are pretty dull, right? You can touch them, there's no real problem. And I think one classic test that a lot of people like to do is how well does it cut a piece of paper? So I've just got a really simple piece of notebook paper. Let me maybe fold this in half just to give it a little bit of rigidity. And watch, when you try to cut this, it doesn't cut, right? See, look at this, it, it, it rips, it tears the paper. It really, it doesn't cut this at all. So see, when I try to, when I try to cut this, it's more ripping the paper and tearing it. It's not actually slicing through. Um, the other classic test I think everyone likes to do is uh, tomatoes, uh, overripe tomatoes. Unfortunately, I don't have large Roma tomatoes or heirloom tomatoes. I've got these little cherry tomatoes, but I've got two that are pretty darn similar and fairly juicy. Let's save one of these for after we sharpen, and let's maybe use this knife and try to cut this little cherry tomato right now with it being dull. And um, actually, maybe tell you, let me show you the cherry tomato first, what it looks like, right? That's what it looks like. And now let's see how this does. See, look at this. I'm slicing like, look at this, it won't cut the skin. <laughs> see, it's still all intact. This thing is pretty, oh boy, see, oh, see, look at that. And it just squirted everything out, right? It just squashed the tomato. It did not cut this well at all. Um, so yeah, this guy is pretty dull. And I guess these are all nice uh, quantitative, um, or excuse me, uh, qualitative tests, right? But a nice quantitative test would be an actual sharpness test. So I built a little DIY uh, sharpness tester where I actually have some test clips slash coupons where we can try to cut them through and see exactly how much force it takes to do this. Um, I have a completely separate other dedicated video showing how I made this for just a few dollars and a few 3D printed parts. But basically this is gonna give us a much more data intensive set of numbers where I can now go ahead and see how much force does this actually take Oh, there we go. That, that was crazy. That was like 1,100 grams of force. So I'm going to mark down all 16 of these knives. We're going to do a test of uh, two cuts before, and then we'll sharpen, and then we'll do two cuts after. In fact, we'll go through and we'll do the paper test and the tomato test uh, again as well, just to get a nice, full, rich data set. So that's the plan. Let's go ahead and now... Um, quantitatively measure the sharpness of all 16 of these knives using my sharpness tester and uh, we'll, we'll take some next steps. 
All right, so we've sharpened a few of these knives and I think I've got the hang of it. It's actually really simple. So with the, uh, you know, traditional uh, European or American style or even a contemporary Asian blade, apparently what we do here is we're just going to work our way through slots number one, two, and three in successive order. So we start here with slot number one and we're going to turn this on and we're going to do several pairs of pulls on both the left and the right side of slot number one and we're going to take about three it said you know three to four seconds for a blade this long to kind of pull through so let's go and start so so that's one pair of pulls through slot number one so we're going to do this a few times And what we're looking to do is to create a burr on the edge of the blade. So I'll show a picture of it over here in the screenshot. This is what the burr should look like. We're basically folding over the metal on one edge of the blade. So you should be able to feel that burr if you kind of run your finger backwards across the blade. You should be able to feel that along the edge of it. So right now we haven't sharpened this enough. I can't feel any burr uh, on the blade. It's all smooth. So let's keep going. Ah, okay, now you can start to feel the burr. Uh, it's not along the whole edge of the blade, that, like right here. In the middle of the blade, I can definitely feel the burr, but not near the edge and the base. So let's do a few more because you want to develop the burr all along the edge of the blade. So let's keep going. Okay, there we go. So now I can feel the burr all along the edge of the blade. Okay, so now we're done with slot number one. So let's move over to slot number two, and we're gonna also do several pulls, pairs of pull through uh, slot number two to hone the blade. So let's go ahead and do that. So you only need about one or two pairs of pulls through stage two. And again, you should be able to feel the burr along the entire edge of the blade. Yep, that feels good. Perfect. Okay, so now we're moving on to the uh, polishing in stage three. So we're going to make three or four pairs of pulls on stage three in kind of a slow fashion, same speed we were doing earlier. Okay, so that was three pairs of pulls on the polishing stage three. Now we're going to do one last pair where you go uh, a little bit faster to just finish it off. There we go. And yeah, the burr is gone, so I don't feel any burr on either side, and this should be a lot sharper now. All right, so let's go ahead and repeat this process with another knife. And um, before we actually sharpen this next one, I want to take a moment to take a closer look at the edge of the blade. And as you can see from some of these close-up images, I know it's a little bit difficult with this light and angle, but um, this knife is not in such great shape in the sense that you can see the, 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 the blade edge has a couple of nicks in it. Um, I'm trying to point them out here. And... Uh, let's take a note of that and I'm going to mark on the knife where these nicks are located and I'd be curious to see when we do the sharpening process, are these nicks taken out and cleaned up when the uh, knife gets sharpened through the tool? Okay, and now here is the after picture and let me see if I can zoom in back here at the edge. Um, let me see if you can see this. It's a little bit hard to see, but you can definitely see where it has taken off some of the blade. You can kind of see the old versus the new there. I know it's, it's probably a little bit difficult to see. Um, but you can definitely see it's had some effect for sure. Um, and also, let's look at the look, look at those nicks. So there were two nicks. One of them was up. Let me see if I can put the... It, it was... Boy, it's really hard to see in this light, but you probably... You can't really see it anymore. There, There's... A minor nick still right here, but it's it's barely noticeable. And then down here, there was another one I actually marked on the blade beforehand. And now you can see it's, it's completely gone. So that did seem to work. It took out some of those nicks, meaning it definitely shaved down the knife a little bit and um, took away some material. But this is definitely sharper. Um, and in fact, this is the knife we were using earlier for our tests with the uh, paper and the tomato. So let's go over and uh, rerun those tests and see how those come out. 
All right, so here's that same knife. Remember, this is the knife that earlier had just mangled this piece of paper. Basically, it just tore the paper and it had squashed this little cherry tomato. So let's see if we can repeat this. We'll get a clean piece of paper, fold it in half just like we did with the other one. And now let's see if this is any better. Wow. Look at that. Now it actually cuts the paper. So this is much better than it used to be. Yeah, look at that. Look at, look at that. It sliced the paper nice and clean. So this is way sharper. Let's, let's repeat our tomato test. So remember last time when we tried to do this, we basically just squashed it. Let's see if this does any better now. Oh, wow. Look at that. It totally cut this thing no problem. So this absolutely worked. And again, let's go back and I'll show you the data with our sharpness tester um, in a little bit. And we can actually get some numbers on how much sharper this is, but it definitely feels better. All right, so how about a uh, serrated bread knife? Let's see how this can do in terms of the delta between a dull knife right now, and then we'll go sharpen and see how um, it does afterwards. So again, here's the dull knife, and then here is a beautiful, uh, bread that my wife made. So let's see, I feel bad. We're gonna sit here and almost like mangle it with this dull knife. Let's see how the dull knife does. Yeah, and you can see this is taking a little bit of effort to slice through. Okay. Okay, so it's definitely, yeah, it, it, it took a little bit of work. It's doable. It doesn't seem to mangle it too bad. But again, let's go sharpen this now and come back and try this again to see if this gets any easier. All right, so apparently we can use this for serrated blades as well. Although in this case, we only use uh, slot number three. So we're going to skip slot one and two. And we're just going to do um, several pairs of pulls through the slot number three. So let's turn this guy on and... Five. I think it says you can go between five and ten, and uh, yeah, that feels a little bit better. Let's go ahead and see if this cuts the, the bread any better now. Okay, here's the same loaf we were playing with earlier, um, and apparently I've been told this is not the right way to cut bread, but we're just going to try this and see if this is any better and how it feels. Oh yeah, this feels a little bit better. Yeah, yeah, that is better. There you go. So this definitely seemed to have worked for the serrated blade. Um, Let's see if we can cut it this way and see if this feels any better. Oh yeah, yeah, that's much better. So yeah, that's, see, nice and easy. Yeah, okay, so it seems like success with the serrated blade. So we repeated this procedure for the entire suite of knives. We started out with all of the dull knives and then tested the amount of force required to cut the wire on our sharpness tester. We actually got two data points per each dull knife and then we're gonna average the results together. And then we went ahead, sharpened all of the knives according to the procedure we just looked at, and then got two more data points for each sharp knife. So in total, each of these knives actually took up four data points, two dull points and two sharp points. So we're going to go ahead and compile all of this data and present it to you next. All right, so we've gone ahead and we've sharpened all of these knives. Uh, there's about 16 of them here, serrated, straight, um, and we've crunched all of the data, and it seems pretty reasonable. So maybe first thing right off the bat, why don't I just scoot over to the side and I'll show you a screenshot of the data of all of these knives. So again, there are 16 knives here. We only sharpened about 14 of them, so two of them, like these little, these little kid knives, we left them dull because that's their design, right? They're supposed to be dull kid knives. But for all these other 14, we sharpen them. And here's all of the before and after data. And as you can see, pretty much across the board, everything improved. I think there was one exception where um, knife number five, which was uh, this kind of serrated bread knife, it actually looked like it got worse. But again, maybe that's part of the story. The, uh, these serrated knives, um, as we saw, you're not supposed to run these through stage one and stage two. You only use stage three to sharpen these serrated knives. And while I can feel the difference when I'm cutting uh, with a sharpened knife, I think it didn't work so well with our sharpness tester because of the variability of the blade, right? These serrated scallops, it really depends where you make the cut on the, uh, on the wire to measure the actual sharpness. So long story short, 
Serrated knives, um, I'm not sure if, if this data reflects the improvement on these knives the best. So as such, we actually threw out the data for some of these serrated ones. So you might want to ignore some of these. So if you only look at data for, you know, sort of traditional straight bladed knives, this is pretty clear cut. It, uh, there, there's 10 of these knives that we sharpened um, and every single one of them drastically improved. In fact, I think you can see some of these, like for example, in fact, uh, like like this one here, knife number four. Uh, let me look at the data here. This was a huge improvement after sharpening, right? So before sharpening, it took an average of around 1,300 grams of force to cut through the wire. After sharpening, that average was down to about 100 grams. So it was only 7% of the force uh, was needed to cut through after going through the sharpening process. So again, a lower number is better because you want less force required to cut through, meaning that the knife is sharper. So for these 10 blades, right, with, with the traditional kind of straight blade, I think if you average over all these 10 blades, it was an average improvement of only needing about 25% of the original dull force. So it went down by, yeah, uh, to a one quarter of what it used to be. So I don't know, you can maybe think about that as like a factor of four improvement if you want to think about that from a sharpness perspective. So this um, sharpening system works really, really well for these straight bladed systems. While we're talking about this, maybe a couple of other things to consider. Um, one thing that I noticed, and I probably should have done this earlier, is I would actually recommend wearing some eye protection when you are running this. There were a couple of times where we had blades like, you know, something like this, right? Where it's a straight blade, but it comes down to like a, a fairly fine tip. Right? I was running this and I was, I was pulling it through a couple of times and sometimes on stage one, that tip of the blade actually caught on the wheel and it went kink and it knocked something and I, I, I don't think anything would explode and send shrapnel in your face, but again, this thing is carving off little shades of metal and there's a spinning wheel. So again, I think some eye protection is probably warranted um, when running this. Um, what else is interesting? Oh yeah, we already talked about the serrated blades. Um, I'm not sure if they uh, reflect um, in the data as well, but they definitely do feel sharper when you're cutting bread with them. So those were helpful. Um, the other thing that's kind of interesting is going through all 16 of these knives, or I guess 14 of them, I mean, I was sitting there for probably a good hour, right? Of just pulling the blades through, going through on either side, doing all of the work. And I am really, really, really glad that this thing is electric and motorized. In fact, you can actually even feel, kind of still feel it. It's a little bit warm for just running for that long. What I'm trying to get at is, I'm not sure there's other types of sharpening systems which are manual where you can, you know, uh, you've got some of these rods and you've got some of these levers and you're running the blade over. And while I've seen some of those, they claim to work pretty well. I'm not sure I would want to do that for a large production of a ton of knives. So having a motorized system definitely helps taking some of the work off and makes it a little bit easier. Um, and again, that being said, uh, what I'm thrilled about is this has really bought a second life for this entire set of knives. So the amount of money I think it would take me to replace all of these knives with a brand new set um, probably has already paid for this once over. Now, that being said, you know, I think I paid, I can't remember, it was about 105 or 114. I, I can't remember, something a little bit north of $100 for this unit. Um, I've seen the price fluctuate pretty significantly. I, in fact, now it's pushing around 200. So I don't know, again, Take that with a grain of salt. If you can find this at a good price, I think it's definitely worth it because um, it saved me a lot of time and a lot of money on all of these knives. So that being said, uh, I think that's probably pretty much everything I wanted to talk about. Not too much to go over other than it seems to be working quite well. All of these knives are pretty much reinvigorated and we've been having good experiences with all of them after sharpening them. So. This is probably a great spot to leave it. I hope you enjoyed the video. And if so, I also hope you'll consider subscribing to the channel. Surprisingly, if you scroll down a little ways and click on that subscribe button, it really does help me continue making these videos. And remember, the new videos come out every Monday. So I hope we'll be able to catch you at a future discussion and we can all learn something new together. So until then, I think I'll sign off. Talk to you later. Bye.